Hello and welcome to this video about the TCHB200 ESP Addressable Device Programmer. In this video we are going to explain how to program a sensor, how to change the polling mode and how to read and interpret the analog value of a sensor. It's worth noting that this is just a basic overview and you should refer to the instruction sheet that comes with the programmer for more details. Before we get started, we're going to take a closer look at the programmer. First of all, you will notice it has three buttons. The left grey button is used to switch the programmer on and then to advance the sensor address in units of 10. The right grey button is used as the off switch and to advance the sensor address in units of 1. The blue button is used to store the address and to read the sensor's analog value. There's also a programming socket for use with the PL2 or PL3 programming lead. And the battery cover is here. When replacing the battery, you will require a standard 9 volt PP3 battery. To program your device, you will need to start by fixing it onto the programmer, ensuring that the three locating pips line up with the grooves on the side. You then need to press the left grey button to switch the programmer on. Upon startup, the programmer will display some status messages before displaying the address of the device fitted. The default reading of a previously unprogrammed device is 127. To change the address of the device, you can use both the left and right grey buttons. As previously mentioned, the left button will increase the address in units of 10, and the right button will increase the address in units of 1. So, for example, to program the address to 73, press the left button until 7 is displayed, and the right button until 3 is displayed. Once the required address is displayed, press the blue button to store the address. Some addressable products, including the mini modules and the manual call points, won't fit directly onto the programming device and so will need to be addressed using a PL3 programming lead. Firstly, connect the jack plug into the programming socket on the TCHB200. Then connect the square plug into the programming socket on the device. You will then be able to program as before. There are three different operation modes, standard, polling and non-polling. The standard mode is just the default setting. Depending on the device, this might already be polling or non-polling, but most devices will allow you to change this. In polling mode, the device LEDs will flash when responding to communications from the panel. In non-polling mode, the device LEDs will not flash when responding to the panel. The TCHB200 can be used to configure any of these modes, but you will need to access a special menu. To access the menu, first make sure you do not have a sensor fitted to the programmer and that it is switched off. Press and hold the right grey button and the blue button at the same time. Still holding those buttons, now hold down the left grey button until the unit starts flashing dots on the screen. Then release the left grey button only. Soon you will see a menu appear on the screen. At this point, you can release the other two buttons. You can then use the left and grey buttons to go through the options and the blue button to store your selected option. Over time, a device may become contaminated by an environment, so it is good practice to check that the device's analog value is within the normal range, otherwise it could affect the performance of the device. To do this, fix the device to the programmer and switch on using the left button. Wait for the address to be displayed and then press the blue button to show the analog reading. This will be continually updated for three minutes or until the device is switched off. This table specifies the normal analog level limits for each device. 
It is important to note that ESP devices feature drift compensation, so your device is unlikely to be out of normal range unless it is situated in a particularly dirty environment. If, however, the analog value reading does not fall within the normal limits, you may need to clean or replace the device. Please note that the limits are also shown on the label on the reverse of the sensor. Thank you for watching this video on Hochiki's TCHB200. We hope it's been useful. For further information, please visit our website at the address on the screen where you can download product specifications and instructions. Don't forget, you can also follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn. And if you're an existing customer, why not request to join our LinkedIn customer group? To subscribe to the Hochiki YouTube channel and be alerted when new content is available, please click the video now. See you next time.